what up everybody welcome back to the phantom frequency network man where we break down everything up in the world of pop culture man doesn't matter what it is if we got an interest in it if you want to hear us talk about it you let us know we get into the nitty-gritty details man it's all about that phantom frequency multiverse if you want to join that multiverse man be a be a part of our phase one of our multiverse saga all right hit that subscribe button down below the video we would love for you to join our community man of like-minded positive geeks where we like to get into all the nitty-gritty details man we're having some great conversation over there on the view askew review and if you don't know what that is it's our big view askew review series where we do all the kevin smith films all eight leading up to his current clerks three man we got a lot of stuff going on me and my main man in Parton crime right here skips we have been doing these daily i mean daily goddamn not really but it almost feels like <laughs> sometimes it's been Close busy around he, around these parts but almost daily but we have been doing the weekly weekly recaps of andor house of the dragon over there in westeros and then we're also doing she hulk over there in the corner of the mcu man so make sure you don't miss any of that goodness and you won't if you click the subscribe button today click those like button share buttons all that good jazz it obviously helps out the show immensely and y'all know the deal you saw the thumbnail it's andor episode five man and let me tell you what my fellow star wars fans we're in a galaxy far far away and it looks like some of your plot points are going to be a little far far away as well because it's a slow burn y'all it's a For slow sure. burn and we're going to get into all the spoilery details you see that spoiler alert so if you ain't watched it jump off watch it hop back on and get with us but for those that have seen it Thank you for joining us today, and if it's your first time, thanks for joining our weekly recaps, man. We also got them on the audio shit on the podcast. You know what I'm saying? You want to listen to us? You don't want to look at this handsome mug if you can't handle if you can't handle these handsome mugs, man. I understand. You know, <laughs> you can't be having a mess in your pants at work. So make sure you listen <laughs> on the podcast feed, baby. We getting real vocal today. We doing it, man. It's Seth Rogen movies and shit. But for <laughs> reals, man, let me know. What do you think about this episode, man? Because this has been a very interesting slow burn for the Star Wars universe, man. I want to get into all your thoughts. Let the people it's a, know. It's so far. I'm. An, I am enjoying it. It is like how we mentioned. It, it's like a slow burn throughout each episode. Like the last time we talked about this, I honestly thought we were going to to have more of that garrison approach. Finally, like the whole built up that we had, like the episode beforehand. Gotcha. But, within like the last episode we we thought okay so this is going to be like the built up but now right. we're getting more of learning more about the crew and learning a little bit more of how the uh the interact with one another and how they are with um with andor with casey because they are still I love skeptical. How you call him casey i love that. yeah <laughs> because at that point like we we they don't know anything about them they just know them right. as uh as like a little somebody just decided to throw onto that mission like last mm -hmm. last minute mm -hmm. and uh, the character that comes to mind he was in punisher uh arville was it arville skeen arville i'm trying to remember the, the guy that had like the tattoos all that was placed all over him right i think his name is scheme in this Ske particular uh, series let me see let me see let me get the cast list real quick man just to make sure uh yes he's Ar arvel skeen skeen okay. with an n not m my bad so yeah arvel skeen but yeah yeah he definitely he, was not fucking with casey he, bro. he was like yo what the fuck dude he's like you're trying to you're trying to join our crew we don't even trust you and like we don't really know too much about their backgrounds either and it make, would make mm -hmm. sense because maybe they had like a plan like this set up and it went straight to shit because somebody was a double agent within the imperial order so that's why mm. i think there is a lot more of him of arvo kind of like really just saying like you know what i don't trust this guy i don't really trust him i feel like he's not giving us the whole story and we don't really get a lot of that revealed out until like the end of the episode when uh casey kind of like really spills out like everything because like how he mentions that towards the end of it he doesn't want to feel like going into the garrison feeling that there's going to be like a, a shift at any point within that mission like somebody's going to betray who uh and throughout the whole time with yeah pretty much so it's kind of interesting to see all that i i like that whole like for them it's like a, i like how like they're huge like their huge scare is like this simple tie fighter because like this oh is yeah when, man like that's when throughout that scene i was like oh fuck dude like they're actually pretty terrified because that's when like their mission will 
fully be blown and it's supposed to be like a hundred percent stealth mission they're going to be impersonating uh imperial officers within their garrison uh Easier. garrison uh, mission so that's kind of cool to see it's kind of had that stealth mission be built up and seeing like a little like little confl- uh conflations like that that happened throughout the show but everything overall i'm enjoying it i'm really like i said like for myself a lot of this a lot of how I would feel about the show moving forward is within the garrison scene, like within that huge built up over time, because it's 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 a long it's like a long arc pretty much to built up for it. It's like clo- going to be three episodes next week, mm-hmm. so I think within that uh, within that like aspect of trying to like have that storytelling be there, we, I'm hoping that the garrison will finally pay off because it kind of seems like how it was with like the Mandalorian how it started off. It was kind of like slow within season one. Yeah, for sure. It was. It kind of had like that kind of like built up already as it is. Not like drastically like slow how Andor is, but it didn't yeah. really grab me like right away until like later on throughout the season and mm. going on with the other seasons as well. So I think with Andor, it, we hopefully the payoff is within the next episode and moving forward with the episode to really giving me that pit point of um of what the show's really gonna be about throughout like the nitty-gritty details of what the show is going to be got you brother yeah most definitely man i gotta say i'm pretty much right there with you i think we're kind of on the same page on this one um where i'm really enjoying this man and i gotta say uh, off top here i wasn't really digging episode four as much as this one or the previous one not saying i dislike the episode but i mm-hmm. thought it was a little more dull in the way they were presenting um the overall conflict with everybody and kind of the paranoia and the distrust they have with andor while right. understandable and I don't mind that plot point being there, I thought this one in episode five did a much better job of really establishing a central conflict with these guys and really getting into the nitty gritty of what people's philosophies are, what their perspective is, what's their motive, why are they in this fight, and all these different things. And getting that conversation back and forth and that character building really gives you a sense of where the conflict comes from. It really makes the conversations very interesting and riveting. It really keeps you on your toes because you never know where anyone's coming from because like you mentioned, We don't know any of these people's backstories or anything about them. Another fresh element I love with this series and hope this hope it's a continued theme and thing that they do with both seasons of Andor. I like getting to meet new characters, not knowing everything, having them in the gray area, not knowing where they fall, who's good, who's bad. That's a thriller in and of itself. And that's what you want, man. Mm -hmm. And I got to say the whole element of when Keen really confronted uh casey as you like to say and i'm gonna definitely continue that one as he, <laughs> as he confronts casey and, and gets that kyber crystal which i was thinking before i thought they did mention that briefly and i was thinking so kyber crystal which does play into rogue one if i'm not mistaken later on love mm. that tie-in right there and the whole thing of like he's like this is worth thirty thousand credits motherfucker and for just some context for those of you not maybe in the star wars aficionado uh no that's pretty much like dollars that's like having 30k like if you had a necklace with some kind of golden coin or something on it right now some kind of jewelry that was worth thirty thousand dollars but you're going on a robbery with some dudes he's like what the fuck you got this shit he could have cashed this in and been long gone what the fuck are you here for bro and and then that's when andor's like man i'm gonna kill your ass you don't give me back the motherfucking crystal bro and just that whole conflict right there to me reminded me of 1982's the thing by john carpenter man i loved all that tense um, being kind of in like a rural area, that tense kind of conflict between the characters of people who can't trust one another, don't know each other personally, but have been kind of put together for a sole purpose and a mission. Loved that whole element and thought that played so strong. And really dig that actor that's playing Keen, by the way, that I want to highlight real fast. Uh, Ebon Moss Bakrak. I'm not sure if I even got anywhere close to saying that right. But oh, the guy's he... a really great actor from The Punisher, which oh, yeah, for reminding me of that. that. Yeah, He's in the latest really hit series that I haven't had a chance to check out with one of the guys from Shameless. It's called The Bear over there on Hulu. I heard that show's great. Yeah. I, I got to watch that pretty Me soon. too, man. Like I got to watch that just for the, just for myself, not even for the channel, because that just looks like really, really fun stuff. Yeah. So just some good down-to-earth, good uh, dramatic storytelling. But yeah, he's, he's done some really good stuff, got some pretty good credits to his name, but I love the way he played this character and really sold how he kind of was warming up to Andor a little bit just to kind of, aha, motherfucker, don't you move. I want to know the facts, and I want to know why you're here. And when Casey gets into all the reasons of why he's here and what his purpose is for being in this fight and being on this mission, loved the way they do it. And I got to say, Diego Luna hasn't missed a beat. He really understands this character, really lives and breathes this character. And I just believe everything he says, man. Great acting Mm -hmm. all across the board anyways. 
But yeah, this episode I thought did such a great job of kind of being a very talk, dialogue-driven episode, but really setting the table and setting the stage for the garrison in a much more compelling and interesting way. A lot of great Easter eggs as well. Mr. Luthen over there, played by the great legend Peter Skarsgård, he's got holocrons and shit like that. Mon Mothman's talking to him about, hey man, make sure you keep your shit together because we can all get exposed in this in the whole conflict with her and her family and them not supporting her getting in the Senate. But we yeah. know it's for a higher purpose and it's for the rebellion. So I love the way that they're slowly bleeding into Mon Mothma and you get these nice, really great, interesting scenes and really great acted scenes with awesome dialogue and just really get in and get out with the characters. And mm -hmm. same thing with the Imperials that are kind of on their tail and kind of getting some kind of uh, sniffing the trail, if you will, kind of catching on to not what they're doing, but knowing something's going on but they can't quite get it past their superiors in a way of where it's definitively true. All this stuff being a slow burn to me really plays well because it's well written. They have a purpose and where they're trying to go with the story. And I think the garrison's definitely right around the corner in the next episode. Right. And uh, like I was speaking to you off camera and mentioned in some of our previous recaps here, I think they're going on three episode arcs, at least for the first season. I'm not sure about the entire both seasons, but I think they're really going for those three to maybe four episode arcs and really just kind of getting these different missions and kind of setting up the world of how casting gets into the rebellion full on and really setting the stage for the future when he gets with K2SO and all the other stuff and really gets into the rebellion as it builds out. But overall, I really, really dug this episode. Probably my second favorite so far after episode three. Really, really right. dug this episode overall. Great stuff. I would say it's up there for me too. I would say this one, breaking wise... I would say number. I would, I'll give it a number two spot because I'm thinking of episode three. It's pretty much going to be the same ranking. I would give it like one uh, episode three rank one, and then episode five would be ranking two, because it feels like you, know, you mentioned before we got a lot more like a lot more development with the characters and getting more further within the stakes of everybody when the rebellion event, rebellion very first started. Pretty much, mm -hmm. this is like pretty much it's like ground up. Like pretty much, yes. Yeah. This garrison heist is like supposed to be able to like should be able to fund them like no problem and everything so forth with their uh, upcoming missions. So Most this is going to be man. interesting to see where they're going to take it from there within the next episode and moving forward and how they are able to establish like a good foot a uh, foot ground for them to be able to stand up against the empire and everything like that. Most definitely, man, because the desperate times call for desperate measures for sure, man. And let's mm -hmm. not forget about Mr. Security Guard over there, Cyril, man. He's been fired. He's back home with his mom. And mom ain't, ain't loving it, man. She's hating on the dude saying, what's your future prospects, man? You ain't got shit going. Yeah, and the guy's like, and he's just like eating, looking, eating his like fruity pebbles. Where eating the his fuck? little fruity pebbles in the morning. <laughs> like, like, man, you better get your ass up and find a job today, bro. Yeah, and like he's like still so dumb in the feed and shit. And he's like, yeah. man, dude. like, And then like for him, like he's like focus on trying to get uh andor himself like he's like what the fuck like this guy i gotta hunt him because he just destroyed my whole my life ruined my life like that was like the thing he was like uh for him he was pretty much starting up his career and everything so forth and it would just ended within like um essentially within like a couple of days yeah two or three days real. and he now he's back he, now he's back to square one and i, I kind of like that i want to see like a lot more of his development of how he's going to build himself back up again and him to try to take that revenge or possibly even maybe switch sides. allies, maybe switch yeah. sides to have them. They be uh, allies with Andorra at a certain point. That's why I'm kind of interested to see where they're going to do with his character moving on within the next couple of episodes. I feel like we're going to probably see like a shift for him within not the next episode too much, but the following episode for that sure. The second half of the of the season, because we do have 12 episodes overall. So, yeah, I think that second half is definitely going to really be cooking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For sure, so. man. And moving on from there, some of the other big plot points as well, man. We get into just kind of getting in with, uh, with Casey, everyone at the camp. Him having a lot of great insight into different things like, hey, uh, Terraman, you might want to switch, uh, switch places with him so your weapon's facing the outside and not facing the inside since you're left-handed. And then Vel ends up giving him a little quiz real quick, like, hey, is, uh, what about her? Right-handed. What about him? Left-handed. Like, Cassian really picks up on a lot of really keen and specific details that a spy definitely is going to need to know. And I love the mm -hmm. way that he can hone in on these small details. And he's the one that can actually input the weight amount for the uh, Imperial Cruiser or whatever they're stealing, whatever Imperial um, type of vehicle they're going to steal to get off with that 
with that uh with all that uh, with all those credits and everything he's the only one that knows what he's actually doing in that regard and without him as he even mentions almost verbatim you couldn't even do the mission without me so it's very interesting to see how he's such an essential piece of the puzzle and they don't even trust him but they can't pull off the mission without him so they have to use him so i love the way that that all plays together with those particular plot points and as i mentioned uh earlier with mon mothma with her family not supporting her and her going into the senate and her trying to get into um in, in the political field with the empire and try to figure out what's going on and i'm and getting a uh, and getting a foot in the door in in the dealings of what's going on but like i said they're kind of assholes and don't really support what she's doing and you can see that marriage is definitely uh torn and definitely strained so i think we yeah. all know why we don't see no man over there with mom mothma in the ot trilogy down the yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, because like, fuck, that's to be rough. Like, that's like morning. I would hate if my morning started like that. I'd be like, real? man, is that my fucking life? It's like, I would be <laughs> so bummed. It's like, ah. Welcome I, to my life. <laughs> yeah, like, that thing is such a, it's such a dread. I, I think she has every right to be kind of like, you know, kind of pretty much being pissed, frustrated, pissed off. I mean, even her, her own daughter is like, kind of acting like a, just, rude towards her majority of the time like a rat bro i'm like man you better watch your mouth like that's why but that's it that's just like the high society life i mean shoot that's what they're at them damn rich kids bro them damn rich kids yeah like that's it like i mean you've seen their food i mean fuck (laughs) like a lot of people back in tatooine a lot of people in other man they get lower levels of course one portion yeah one moss (laughs) it's like what the fuck is this it's like not even food it's it's like a, you, you get to see that that society difference because Coruscant pretty much at then in the if you're in top level you're in the rich you're rich you're good, chilling, good. bro you got filet mignon or whatever yeah. the hell they have for filet mignon in their universe Fuck you know what I mean you ain't drinking no blue milk around here you know what I'm saying we got white milk out in this bitch okay yeah there's no alternatives to that crap and then that's when um it gets lower and lower that's why it's kind of cool to see that we get back to Coruscant we get to yes, see the high dude. level uh yes. the high class society how it is. And then, Most like, deaf. a little bit with, not really too much, is with the officer. I always forget his name, the officer's Cyril? name. Cyril. Like, I always remember, because he, he has a similar name to a pro skateboarder I, I yeah. used to be a fan of. So. Fuck, fuck. Like, Cyril, like, we get, we kind of get something like that, because, like, he does, I think he's pretty much based off of Coruscant, but he's in, like, kind of mm-hmm. the lower levels. And you kind of, yeah. like, see. More, like, mid middle class. Yeah, and then, like, you, you, we got to see that perspective, too. I kind of want to see, like, the lower class in there. Like, I want to see, like, the lower levels of Coruscant <laughs> in and dive gutters. into it. Yeah, because I hear, Skin like, pretty row. much, like, at base level, there's, like, no oxygen in Coruscant. Like, it's all Damn, just fucked real? up. Yeah, Holy like, shit. it's, it's like, not a lot of people are able to live, like, the lower levels. I forgot what level is, like, one, zero through 100 or something like that. Damn. But it gets pretty... um it gets pretty crazy within like the levels of course on as it is just like that that itself is like pretty there's like a lot of good lore that, that that's usually goes behind that and stuff like that for sure and there's there's a lot of good easter eggs and a lot of uh, world building that goes on in this show which i think is really dope how they don't hyper focus on that and the overall fan service of the show because it's definitely in there but mm. i love how it's just subtle Everything with the show really plays into the subtleties of everything, and that is no more highlighted than the scene with the TIE fighter like you highlighted up top there. That scene was incredible, man. It played almost like a horror movie or like a thriller for a quick minute. You know what I mean? Like, oh, shit, it's a TIE fighter. Cover the guns, cover the guns, cover the guns. It's like, oh, shit, okay. And then you're like, okay, he's gone. He's like, no, he's not. And you're like, oh, shit. It almost made me feel like when I was watching Nope. It was like, oh, shit, there's that damn alien ship again. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> god damn. And the then the freaking TIE fighter comes overhead and he just speeds by like an asshole and it just totally like rings their ears, man. He's like, yeah. God, I would, that's like, that's something that it's cool to see. Like something like a basic TIE fighter like that. Yeah. Just drives fear into everybody. Like, it never gets fuck. old, man. It never gets yeah. old. Yeah. That's why I was like, oh, hell yeah. This is going to be freaking, that's something that we were kind of missing from like the power of what the, pretty much how the Imperials were. At yeah, the time, man, like we haven't height. really gotten into like the menace of them. I feel like they've done a pretty good job on the Mandalorian over there with, um, uh, over there with, uh, um, G- uh, Giancarlo Esposito's character. You know what I'm saying? I think they've done a great job with his character and really establishing his threat and his menace as, a um, as, a uh, and, and stuff like that. And I think they've done a really good job of making the empire really seem, 
excuse me, so menacing and larger than life in this series and really making it seem like there's no way to really get an upper hand in the situation and just mm-hmm. that overall dread of the situation. But that slight glimmer of hope is done so well in this thing, man. And then we jump over to those Imperials, as we mentioned earlier, and there's a ton of Easter eggs and references dropped up in here. We got Jakku reference. We got a Kessel reference. Kessel run, obviously, with Han Solo and everything that we did end up seeing in the Solo prequel, which okay. to me was a little bit uh, disappointing and middling, but that's a conversation for another day. And mm-hmm. yeah, like Jakku, as we all know, the home planet of our girl Ray Skywalker, apparently. Ray Palpatine, whatever you want to say. Over there where she got her beginnings back in Episode 7, Force Awakens. So I like how they're bringing in and bridging in both eras of this thing in a really cool way. And I love how um, Andor really plays into all the different time periods of Star Wars in such a great and uh, subtle way. So that was pretty cool, man. And then we jump back over to our Rebels as they're practicing their marching, getting everything going after the uh, right before the TIE Fighter comes around. After that whole instance goes on, they get back on the road, and then now they're going to actually go in and start heading towards that garrison so they can go uh, pull off this mission. And that's when Skeen goes in and threatens Andor's life and puts a blade up to his neck and says, don't move and you know exactly why. And he takes that damn kyber crystal and says, I want to know exactly what the fuck you're doing. Why are you here? What's your motive? What's your purpose? Why are you here trying to rob some shit when you got thirty uh, something worth 30,000 credits, bruh? More right. money than he's probably ever seen. And then Andor tells him, I don't got to tell you shit. And we get a classic Tarantino, classic Western standoff right there. And then he's like, hey, man, don't put me on the spot, bro. I'll shoot your ass right now. And I was like, oh, man, is this going to go straight in Glorious Bastards right now? <laughs> Except Andor's going to get out of there somehow because we know he doesn't die yet. I was like, damn, yeah. is this mission going to go completely south? Because that's where my mind was at for a quick moment. I don't know about you, man. I was I like, c- shit, dude, is this going to go complete, like, completely off the rails? Which mm-hmm. it doesn't, as we quickly see. And then Vel's able to get everyone to calm down. Everyone goes back on the road, man. And uh, uh, and as we go on from there, Andor does admit a little bit later that I am doing it for the money, so you can judge me if you want, but you can't pull the mission off without me, and I gave you valuable information and have no other reason to be here and have no other reason to bring you guys down, and I have no love for the Empire. So let's get the mission over with. Everyone's scared shitless just as much as I am. Let's finish this shit off and let's move on with it. And I love how they kind of resolved this issue, at least for now, going into this next episode for episode six, man. But what did you think about all that whole heated debate, man, and that whole um, heated discussion right there with those two characters, man? I think right there, it's just something within the next episode. I just feel like there's going to be a lot of... um I feel like there might be a backstabbing scenario for uh, for Andor himself. I think uh, you think Argo, he's gonna back um, backstab them, or someone's gonna, gonna someone's betray gonna, him. Someone's gonna betray him, and I feel like mm. it's gonna be at a crucial moment or something along there because it's just something mm. like I feel like it's looking like Arville, like Arville skiing already because he already doesn't really trust him like right from the get go. He's so skeptical yep. about him. Seems very him. on edge. Yeah, and he like the whole tattoo thing that uh casey's right, pretty much like towards the beginning yeah yeah he's like he's like noticing a lot of stuff and then like probably in his mind he's already feeling like kind of off already about with uh arvo already as it is and it's kind of being more of like he still has his guard up but he's still not like fully committed of being safe within working with this team even though it's such like a high a high stakes job like he's yeah at for the, real He's like, he's, I feel like, and I feel like And like Andrew's feeling like there's something still there, but we, we don't, we won't know until like the next episode when shit actually hits the fan and things are getting moving. That. So True that, that there's some of that. I feel like the other crew members are pretty, they're, they trust, uh, they already pretty much trust Casey as it is like, um, Karis, is that how you say it? The guy with, the the, um, that's like very like tech savvy in that sense. Like oh yeah, I think a lot his name. Retro I, think, stuff. I think his name was Karis. Yeah, Karis. Like I feel like he hundred percent like it's, he trusts uh, Andor already as it is, and he's like, oh, I don't see why like why we won't trust him. He, like he's already on our side. He's already with us, and he's willing to stand up against yeah, the Karis, Empire and everything. Right. Karis Nemec. Karis Nemec. Yeah, Karis. Yeah. So that's why I think he. He's like gonna be. I feel like he might be one of the ones that might die in the next episode. I feel like he's gonna get killed off. If if something is gonna go self, something's gonna revolve him like to get like probably blasted in the back when they're trying to get away, Ooh. or he uh, or he gets captured or something Damn. along that lines. There, that'd be I terrible, feel, man. Because they're gonna I, torture the hell out of you. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I think there's gonna be some of that. I think 
that's why because like they hinted a lot like a lot like oh don't worry about it we're gonna see you next um we're gonna see you tomorrow pretty much like the day after the mission but right i they're hinting like they're gonna be seeing everybody i feel like we're not gonna see like the full crew within that oh going yeah to man the garrison i, I highly back. doubt that because yeah it's so, a high stakes situation and uh we know andor does not come to a happy ending so that definitely oh, no. is not the vibe of his storyline no no like there's gonna be for sure that um that i guess that 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 I guess the darkness, the grittiness there of like a character going to be falling in within like the whole garrison evasion. And Most death, man. I think that's that whole argument scene and everything so forth. It's going to, it's going to be building up a lot within the next episode for sure. Hell We're going yeah, to see man. like I'm everything, really hyped to see, it. see everything finally play out and kind of see what, um, what direction it's going to be. Cause what's her face? Uh, Dedra, the girl who was like working on the Imperial cases pretty much with the rebellion yeah. and stuff like that. I think she's like, she already has a hints and like already as it is. And her partner even mentioned in the episode is like, it, this is like, this is too random to be random. Like this is all kind <laughs> yeah, of seems like exactly. it's something is building up to it. And she's already kind of on that, on their trails too, but trying to really figure out what's going on. And it's kind right. of interesting to see her character kind of like picking up clues throughout the way. Yeah, and I feel like sure. after the garrison, she's for sure going to get the spotlight. And uh, I forgot the actor who was the, um, the actor's name um, or the actor's uh, character that's doing like the whole uh, surveillance within the, um, the planet within the first uh, three episodes. I forgot oh, his name. Uh, um, I can't remember his name either. The, he, I think he's gonna be like the one that kind of like gonna be losing his uh, power of control because like oh. his character and uh, Dedra's character was kind of clashing heads a lot already about sure, like certain yeah. things. So I feel like Dedra might take like the upper hand as a possibility and kind of take the case of trying to like uh, pretty much get rid of like the upcoming rebellion and stuff like that towards the Empire. So it's going to be interesting to see that aspect within the um, the imperial side within their behind the scenes and how they're trying to like find a way to get rid of the rebellion uh, rebellion building up and everything so forth. I so. feel you, man. I feel you. But yeah, man. Everything's really heating up and it's really going to be building up into this sixth, uh, this next sixth episode, man. We're going to be halfway through, so it's going to be interesting. It's interesting to see how the garrison thing goes, how this heist goes, if the mission is successful, who's get, who gets got, who does not, who gets captured, who gets tortured. It's going to be very, very interesting to see, and I just cannot wait, man. But what's your big, like, couple predictions for that next episode, man? Do you think we're going to see Saw Guerrero pop up in this thing yet? Do you think he's a few episodes off? Do you think the garrison will be successful? All that kind of jazz. What do you think we're going to see in this next episode, my man? I think garrison might be partial. I think, honestly, mm. it's going to be, like, partial success, or it's not... They're gonna gain some benefit, but not as full as amount. I feel like something is gonna go south within the mission, and it's gonna cause a lot more for uh, Luthen and Mon to be kind of more scared on their end, in their sense too, because like they're like like they mentioned before, they're like their their lives were also in stake too within this mission as well, because there's like right. a lot of controversy going on, and I feel like this mission might go kind of as planned, but not like too too much of the benefits on their side we're obviously going to lose a member maybe two within the the next episode and i feel like for solve we probably won't see him to like i'll give it like another two or three more episodes i feel like at least for I was another two the or same three thing. like seven eight maybe yeah yeah around around that uh, around um around that time frame because like right now we're still getting over the garrison and we still got to go through like everything throughout that mission, the aftermatch, and like see what the stories gonna be playing out from there. So it's gotcha. for sure gonna be. Um, it might be a while. We probably won't see him until like the end of the season, most likely. Yeah, you might be right, man. That is kind of a big to do with Forrest Whitaker, Saw Gerrera coming back in the fold, having his own faction of the rebellion. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be interesting. It's definitely gonna have to definitely take place after this mission is is done and over with for sure. So I definitely think it's beyond episode seven and beyond for sure. Um, yeah, my big prediction for the next episode is they are going to get the garrison out of there, but most of them aren't going to survive. Maybe just Andor and possibly Vel or something to that nature. But I think the rest of them are going to get wiped out. They're going to get oh, away shit. with the garrison, and then it's going to continue on from there. And Cyril, I would think he's going to actually start trying to make some moves next episode. I think he might actually start looking more into what's going on. And I think Deidre as well is going to start to catch on to their uh, <clears throat> catch on to their trail. And after the garrison thing goes through, I think it's definitely going to 
raise a lot of red flags and start getting those superiors of hers that are doubting her to start really thinking about what the hell's going on at that base and what's going on with that. But we also got that Imperial uh, inside agent right there that apparently has his vendetta against them due to the fact that he lost his woman, and that's plain and simple of what it is. So it's going to be interesting to see, is he going to double-cross them? Is he truly against the Empire? Is yeah. that truly all it's about? Is there a deeper, more secret motive here? All that stuff's going to come into play because we only saw that character briefly, maybe once or twice. Yeah, once and or twice throughout the episode. So I'm extremely interested to see where that character's going to go and mm-hmm. what's going to happen there from, from uh, that point on. But yeah, there's a lot of great stuff to come with this show for sure. And it's definitely at a slower burn, but I think it's really taking time where it needs to and still moving that plot forward in a sense as well. And I think it's just a slower pace thriller. That's the kind of vibe of the show. So you definitely got to know that going into it. The mileage can vary for some of y'all out there, for everyone watching, man. Just make sure you kind of know your taste going into it because it's not a lot of pew pew, not a lot of zoo zoo, not a lot of that, not a lot of hyperspace. You know what I mean? We don't got a lot of dog battles going on, a lot of dog fights. We don't got any walkers. It's strictly about just getting on the inside, really the espionage element of the rebellion, really that side of things, and really getting to see the rebellion in action with no Jedi <clears throat> oversight, no Jedi intervention, no Force-sensitive, nothing going on, no complete o- um, over-the-top elements to it. We don't have any like really in-your-face, on-the-nose fan service. Just a lot of great world-building that really, really informs this show so damn well, man. Right, and I just right. can't wait to see where it goes. Really, really digging it. This is exactly pretty much what I expected it to be, and I think it's definitely going to be something that is going to let Lucasfilm and Disney and everyone at the Star Wars camp know that this is the direction you need to move in. Not that every show has to have this tone and style, but you need to go in those fresher, newer directions and use some of your characters that maybe didn't get as much shine as they could have and really use them to highlight and bring people in on new stories in the same time periods we already know or new time periods like the Old Republic, etc. So... I'm super hyped to see where this thing goes, man. It's really, really good television. I'm digging it. Definitely one of the better shows on right now next to House of the Dragon and stuff like that. But uh, but overall, man, what would you uh, what would you want to give this? Uh, what do you think you'd give this episode a uh, 1 out of 10 or a 1 out of 5 stars, man? Whatever you want to do. What would you give mm-hmm. this particular fifth episode of, Ca- of Casey? I'm trying to remember where I placed like the recent uh, episode... Yeah, the most recent episode, episode four. Yeah, I was somewhere in like the the, the mid range seven point man. So this one, I'm definitely going to put a good eight point five man. Good, great stuff. Really, really moving the uh, things along. I really dug this particular episode. One of the strongest ones so far, I, for sure. I'm gonna go with a say, solid eight eight five. Yeah, eight eight five. I'll go. I would eight. say a I'll solid. Eight. I'll say a solid seven point five. I think I was around like seven point three or seven point four. So it's definitely rising for you. Slowly yeah. but surely, but definitely on that uh, on that incline instead of that decline. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to For remember sure. where I, where I placed it at, but 7.5 feels like it's pretty it's pretty good where it's at. Like the garrison, hopefully, it might skyrocket up to like a yeah, so man. 7. You know 6, what I mean? 7.8, and um, yeah, that's why it's it's gonna be interesting to see where the uh, the series will be taken off from here. There's the show, so man. It's going to be really, really exciting, man. But we want to hear from y'all as always. Let us know what you thought about this latest episode of Andor in the comment section below. Is it kind of boring you? Is it just too slow? Can you just not get with the pacing? Or do you love that a Star Wars show is taking this thriller, espionage, um, Winter Soldier approach? to the overall Star Wars universe, man. Are you loving it? Are you not loving it? We would love to hear from you in the comments below, man. And if you don't have, um, if you're not really frequent on YouTube and you're listening over there on the podcast feed, make sure you click download and follow. It really does help the show out immensely anywhere you get your audio podcast feeds, man. We got you. And jump on over to the social media, man. Follow us at fan underscore frequency on twitter we be posting all the episodes up there every now and again i like to post some polls and everything connect with us over there and also over there on the instagram man we be posting content on there literally almost daily if not daily follow us at fandom underscore frequency and let us know what you thought about this latest episode of andor and anything else going on in the world of pop culture if you got any request, hit us up over there or drop it down below in the comments. We're actually doing some Samurai Jack stuff as a request. We will, we will do anything that's open 
anything that we have any interest in that, that you want to see and we think will be a fun idea, we'll, we will definitely entertain it and we will cover it here on the channel. So make sure you do that. And we appreciate each and every one of you for checking this out. If this is your first time joining us and you stayed all the way to the end, good for you. You got us the view. <laughs> You're great. You're dope. We can't wait to see what else is in store for the show, and we can't wait to see what else is in store for the channel. But if you're subscribed, you won't miss a single thing, y'all. You won't miss a single thing. Any other parting words, man, for the day? Anything you want to highlight that we're working on? Anything else like that? Any uh, any um, any recommendations for people on things you want them to check out that's coming out this weekend? We got Hellraiser, Werewolf by Night, ton of oh, shit dropping. Oh, yeah, drop that's coming out Friday. Um, yeah, no, you pretty much dropping. just... You named it all pretty much. You know, we got to see all coming up within the next yeah. episode, episode eight. We episode we're finally eight, gonna baby. see we're finally see Matt Murlock. Hopefully that's gonna be great. Oh yeah. With Tune the, in tomorrow. Tune hopefully in tomorrow. it hopefully I'm hoping it, it really is on that good page finally, in my perspective. But <laughs> I think other than that, World by Night is coming up on Friday, like you mentioned Ooh, before. That's in, gonna be interesting to see. But other than that, yeah, just keep on following us. You know, hit that subscribe button and everything so forth. Yeah, and yeah. as always, just be mentally and physically strong and have a great, uh, you know, great rest of the week and, and everything so forth. Hell yeah, man. We love you. We appreciate each and every one of you for checking this out. And until next time, make sure you stay tuned. You don't sleep. Much love. And may the force be with you. Oh, peace out. Always. <laughs>